Hello and welcome to our very short description of our research and our review on human aquapoint for regulation. We're a proper global team and we thought we'd use the classic Zoom meeting view as we've been working like this for the last 18 months and it's very authentic to what we do. My name is Alex Connor and I'm a reader in biomedical science communication at the University of Birmingham. So I have with me Professor Rosalind Bill from Aston University. Hello everyone. I have Dr. Mutaz Salman from Oxford University. I don't know, it is, have I pronounced it right? Hello, yeah, surprisingly you did. <laughs> and Dr. Phil Kitchen, also from Aston University. Hello. Okay, so, so Phil, why do we care about water and the brain? Okay, so the central nervous system really tightly regulates water flow all of the time. This water in the brain is used to maintain the physical size, the shape and the location of all the different kinds of cells in the brain. And these are all fundamental factors for maintaining a functioning neural network. And this water flow is also really important for clearing out toxic waste products from the brain. And this is particularly important as we age for maintaining good neuronal health. Right, so brain water needs to be flushed. Mutaz, how does that involve Aquapoint 4? Well, good afternoon everyone and Alex. Well, water goes into and out most of cells by osmosis, but tremendously sped up by one of the 13 mammalian water channels called aquaporins. Now, whilst the brain and yours don't seem to have much aquaporin at all, there is so much aquaporin for in the astrocytes of the brain. In fact, it is increasingly used to confirm that a cell is an astrocyte in the first place. So when water flow of astrocytes through aquaporin for is disrupted, there is a reduced waste clearance currently known as the glymphatic clearance. And this has linked to other neurogenerative diseases such as Alzheimer and Parkinson's. More accurately, a brain uh, after head trauma often swells up, specifically due to the disruption of the normal aquaporin for mediated water flow. This cerebral edema leads to millions of cases of brain damage and death every year. There is unfortunately currently no available drug treatment that can block or stop this from happening. Therefore, aquaporium 4 is a promising and validated drug target for cerebral edema. Thanks, Mutaz. Okay, so that is clearly the problem. Roz, what can we do about it? Okay, well, people have tried to find drugs that can block or stop aquaporium 4 function, but to no avail. And one reason that that may have hindered progress in this area is that aquaporium 4 in astrocytes has often been incorrectly thought of by quite a number of people as being rather a static protein held in the plasma membrane. Now, excitingly for brain swelling researchers, recent work for a number of groups, including ours, has shown that aquaporin 4 is actually rather dynamic. It can move from side to side in the plasma membrane, and it can move into and out of the plasma membrane post-translationally, both under normal conditions, but also importantly, in response to disease or trauma. So that means we can now target this really fundamental pathway in the search for new drugs. These studies on brain water homeostasis in health, but also following accidents such as trauma or in disease states, will help the millions of patients worldwide every year for whom no pharmacological interventions are currently available. Thanks, Alex. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.